few months ago, I was in India in the midst of the very bad second wave of COVID um, epidemic. And now, first of all, I would like to co congratulate the people from Mumbai, the people from India all over, um, and for the health workers and for the leaders, some of the leaders to really have faced off this uh, second wave uh, courageously and as well as possible. First of all, the virus is adapting to survive. And to survive, it needs to multiply in its hosts. Several variants or mutants of the virus have developed over time with increased activity, which is good from the perspective of the virus and more challenging from the perspective of the human hosts. More variants will keep developing further in the future, at least as long as the large part of the global population is not vaccinated. We are all in this together. New variants must hold some advantage over old ones if they are to become the dominant virus. That advantage could be won in many different ways, but for a respiratory disease like COVID-19, one of the most important factors is transmissibility, how easily the virus passes from one person to another. Life attenuated vaccines, in my opinion, have not been in the origin of the, at the origin of the eruption of this var variant at all. I would like to share a few comments now from the global perspective and India in particular. From the global perspective, as long as a large part of the population in the world is not vaccinated and is still susceptible to be infected by the virus, there will be mutations and variants that possibly become more transmissible, but not necessarily more lethal. The richer countries are on the pathway to vaccinate a large part of their populations while low- and middle-income countries are struggling to get the vaccines, partially because the production of vaccines is not large and fast enough, and that needs to be corrected quickly. For India, this means that faster and larger-scale vaccination needs to be organized, especially for those that have not been infected yet. In the meantime, the public health measures need to be widely implemented, and those are the same as effective and as effective for all of the variants namely distance from each other, hand sanitation and masking. This also means no large scale gatherings as what happened just before the second wave. In India, I also feel that health workers at all levels should be vaccinated fast as many have lost their lives during these two waves. India could also help accelerate and boost the production of vaccines for India first and for the rest of the world. I do not think children are more susceptible to the Delta variant, but what is happening is that the Delta variant is more transmissible. And as this variant infects all people that are not vaccinated yet, and as children under, nine, under 12 years old cannot get vaccinated yet, those children are susceptible. When they get infected, children most often do not become seriously ill, but some do. And as more get infected, we see more children ill and even die. We should expect that if more kids are getting infected, we could see also more severe diseases come to light. Still, there is no evidence that children are more susceptible to the Delta variant of the virus than others who are not unvaccinated or that causes more severe illness. It is more contagious in kids, just like it's more contagious in other unvaccinated individuals. But it's not more contagious in kids than other unvaccinated individuals. What is happening in the richer countries is that more and more we see arguments being raised to also vaccinate children once it has been proven to be secure in trials. I however think we should vaccinate the adults as much as fast as possible in the whole world also in the middle-income countries and the lower-income countries and ensure enough production is available to do so quickly. I also think India should try everything to get the schools reopened for children because a year without schooling will have a serious impact on those children, their households and on the economy in general in India.
I think all countries can benefit greatly from telehealth. In the richer countries, we saw a lot of resistance against this before COVID, but it seems now to be fully accepted mainly to protect medical staff. In lower income countries, there is less resistance against telehealth and building telehealth platforms of high quality and low cost could really make a major difference in countries like India. First, because of the lack of healthcare staff work in, man, in many places. Second, to protect the healthcare workers and the patients. Third, to increase coverage in the most remote and rural areas faster. Countries like India have a major asset with community healthcare workers like ASHAS, as they have not sufficiently been recognized, remunerated, and supported in India up till now. I see a major opportunity to bring better health services across this vast country. And I'm already impressed by several of the telehealth services already functioning in India and the volunteering of so many of the healthcare workers to participate in this effort. I think India can lead the way for the world on telehealth services. And I hope to be able to contribute to this. First of all, pregnant women with COVID were more likely to deliver preterm compared to pregnant women without COVID. Babies born to mothers with COVID are more likely to be admitted to the neonatal unit. But existing data in the global north show that COVID has prompted a short-term fertility decline in many countries, while in some developing countries, the pandemic is interrupted to supply chain and access to family planning services therefore increasing the risk for unwanted pregnancies. So we seem to have a mixed picture worldwide. But alarmists about fertility changes should be avoided. Crisis-related dips in fertility have been seen before and most often followed by post-crisis reborns. Changes in human fertility are never obvious in the short run given 29 months of pregnancy and as the pandemic continues, changes in birth rate will become increasingly clear. Of course, it is paramount importance to keep pe vaccinating people faster everywhere. And I'm not sure what you mean with not having a guarantee of protection. Those vaccinated rarely get a severe disease or die. We now see an epidemic of the unvaccinated. A vaccine is of course not never a hundred percent, but these are some of the best vaccines we've ever had in our lifetime. So vaccinating is important and in the meantime public health measures stay important like masking, distancing, no large gatherings, hand washing, sanitation. Now as far as the end of the epidem epidemic is concerned, I do, not, I do not think we will see an end of COVID soon and the disease will rather become endemic. We cannot eradicate the disease or the epidemic because animals are also infected with the virus and therefore eradicating in humans will not be possible. It can only be controlled a bit like flu and possibly we will need to regularly re-vaccinate re against new vaccines, but that science will show in the future for how long the protection of the vaccine will work and if variants finally uh, succeed to escape um, the vaccines. For the moment, they really don't. The vaccines still work against the variants we have today. Thank you. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.